Say hi, Poppy. Where do I start? Found out you're pregnant quite late. 23? 23 weeks. Waters broke at 26, so three weeks after finding out you're pregnant, your waters broke. Rushed down from where we are down to Plymouth, so that's an hour and a half drive away. And then you came home, and kind of nothing happened until 28 weeks, almost on the dot, and you started getting some pain and symptoms. And then at 28 plus 5, after I would say a three day labour, little Poppy joined us, didn't she? Oh, How much does she weigh? £2.3 when she came out. Um, unbeknownst to us, the first 20 minutes of her life were very difficult, but luckily the health professionals managed to resuscitate her and stabilise her. And then we spent 88 days in the neonatal unit, starting in intensive care. And you then, when they're stable, you move down to high dependency, and eventually you move to low dependency. But there's, there was a short stay in intensive care, I, I, that's fair to say, Emma. Um, very long stay in high dependency, but we went back into intensive care at one point. <laughs> Sorry, Buster's just thrown his sock at uh, me because he wants attention. Are you an idiot? Hello. With most premature babies, you will find they go on to what they go on to first: ventilation for breathing. <coughs> So it's not CPAP, is it? It's uh, intubation. Intubation first. So probably had that for like three days. Stop throwing your sock at me. There you go. Um, and then it was CPAP, which is continuous positive airway pressure. And that was to help inflate the lungs, wasn't it? Um, and I should mention, going back to when she was born, they injected her with surfactant, which the guy said was like helping to blow up a balloon in the lungs, helping to keep the lungs open. Um, and that one little shot, did someone tell us how much that costs to make it? £300 per tiny shot of surfactant, so it's crazy the drugs that go into it. Um, anyway, she was on CPAC for about just a few days, and then she was on Optiflow, so that's the third and next step down. She was on that for a long time, and that is a tube under the nose that pushes air up, pushes oxygen up. Good <laughs> And it was six litres, then four litres. Two litres of Optiflow, we're told, is basically the same as the next stage, which is low flow, which is what she's got now. Um, and the, the way that they tell that what she needs is they have a saturation monitor on her f uh, foot or, or wrist, and it, it measures, using a red light, the amount of oxygen in her blood. Here it comes. What advice can we give people, Emma, that are watching this, that have just uh, maybe just been admitted to the NICU or about to be admitted. Don't set any expectations. Don't set any expectations. It's led by the baby, not by you, not by the doctors. It's it's entirely up to up to them. When you say it's a roller coaster, they certainly mean it. But look, she's here, she's home now. Very early on in our journey they did have the conversations with us of an unpleasant nature. There's still what might or might not happen to her, but I don't really want to go into too much, but you have to just remain hopeful and give them a chance, a fighting chance to go through it all. There are lots of procedures that seem to get done throughout. Um, they do an eye screening after 30, 32 or 36 weeks, can't remember exactly, which was quite unpleasant because they had to hold her eyes open and look in the back for any damage from the exposure to oxygen that she's had. Um, they consider 37 weeks term, don't they? But, but yeah, they will keep you in to around the due date, usually, to monitor. Um, Poppy's case is different, but I imagine a lot of premature babies get it, in that she has 
which is demonstrating quite nicely now, um, uh, an ability to have an unsafe swallow. So she can't coordinate her swallowing, breathing, and sucking at the same time at the moment. But it, it, there was a few other premature babies that had feeding tubes. Um, which is weird, isn't it? Because it goes up her nose and into her belly. And we feed her every three hours um, via a tube. Which now is on like 60, but Emma was just saying earlier, the first time we fed her was one mil at a time every hour. Just one little, one mil in, of milk. Just in addition to a drip. And she had a drip of fluids, yeah. A baby with a drip. Hey. Go on then. <laughs> and she, I say when she was, she was like fit in one hand when she was first born. About the butt. So, <laughs> uh, you sh I didn't realise how much babies fart. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot, but in hospital we were celebrating every time she pooed because she would not go for like three days because um, the special formula can block them up, the medicines can block them up. But towards the end of the journey mm -hmm. you move into your own room with them, or you room in as it were, so you can get used to that before you go home. Um, Poppy has chronic lung disease, but that's not a disease is it? It's, it's because of I'm looking around. the lungs were too premature, so they're they described it as it's like scar tissue and it needs to heal and then grow whereas a full-term baby will just come out with a working set of lungs so that's why she needs continuous oxygen he's kind of checking on you I'm very impressed with this dog he's been like um, a little guard dog to Poppy hasn't he? yeah you Buster um, there are support groups which are worth checking out on there there's neonatal users group Snug which we use they brought in cake quite a lot that was great oh yeah how can I forget? Poppy came the same day we got the keys to our first home. Everything at once. Everything at once. <laughs> what are you doing? You forgot about the multiple transfusions. Oh, blood transfusions, yeah. She had three blood transfusions. Um, because her blood count was too low, so they had to hook her up with loads and loads of tubes and wires up to the thing Good and. Girl. It was very stressful the first time, wasn't it? And the second time. Third time we were just like, alright, okay. But she needed that just to help us stay alive. Uh, we also had a big event with these Yep, first jabs. So the first jabs were. Will you stop sniffing the camera? The first jabs were at her two months old from her birth date, but that was still prior to her due date, so. She just wasn't ready for it, but she needed to have them equally, and and she just didn't cope and had to go back from low depth and low dependency into high dependency, back on Optiflow from low flow, and had to have some recovery time. But um, since then, we've been back in hospital, haven't we, with her, and had her next lot of jabs, and she's coped just fine. It was a precaution to go in, and she bounced back. Okay, Bobby, here comes Mummy. Here's her reaction to you. That's kind of our journey. If you're if you're watching this and you're not a friend and family of ours or, or follow Poppy, um, by the way, I have to plug the Instagram because that's really popular at the moment. Photographs of Poppy that people just love. So that's at the Mingo family. But if you're watching this because you're going through this at the moment, just hang in there. Don't expect it to be certain time, certain date. Don't don't set any expectations because it'll always surprise you. There's not much more I can say really. Hopefully we will be able to share some more videos, not anytime soon because of what's going on, but later in the year when Poppy starts to go on trips and adventures. And I can't wait to share a video with everyone of Poppy's reaction to her first trip to the zoo. Night night Poppy. Say bye!